India's first son in chess, Vishwanathan Anand, has won the World Championship matches in all the three different formats. He won it for the first time in a knockout World Chess Championship. He went on to beat Alexis Shirov of Spain in the finals that were held in Tehran at Iran. Then he went on to win the World Championship match tournament a few years back. After that, he won a World Championship match against Vladimir Kramnik of Russia. And very recently, he again defended his World Championship title against Vesel Topolov of Bulgaria when the match was held at Sofia in Bulgaria. Let's have a look at Anand's exploits at the top of World Chess. To reach the pinnacle of chess has been a long journey for Anand. Starting at the tender age of six, when most other kids were busy pushing chalk, Anand was initiated into the game of chess by his mother. At the age of 14, he won his first world title by becoming the world junior chess champion. And then he went on to become the world's youngest grandmaster at the age of 17 in 1987. India had found her first son in chess. Very soon, Anand marched into the selected group of super grandmasters when he defeated the then world number one, Gary Kasparov, in an exciting match final of the Credit Suisse in Lausanne in 1996. Later in 2000, Anand got another chance to have a go at the World Championship and this time he succeeded and Anand defeated one opponent after another to reach the finals where he defeated Alexis Shirov by three and a half margin. Anand crowned the world chess champion, the 15th world chess champion, following Alexander Khalifman. And he joins the Super League now. This was one title that had eluded him for a long time, posing with the glittering trophy there. Great performance by Anand. Basically, I think in the first three matches, I was very, very steady. I managed to finish it without a tie break. The Halifman thing was the one excitement in the show. But uh, in the end, it worked out well. Maybe my birthday saved me. And after that, again, it was pretty smooth. I, you know, though it looked smooth and maybe even easy, it was never that way. Alexei is a tough opponent, and all, each of these games took a lot of energy. But obviously, I'm very happy to finish the game in four finish the match in four games and also to have uh, gone through only one tie break and that's excellent. It is a traditional event. The event shifted to mains about seven years ago. Since then it is being held here. And Anand apparently the has equalized. Anand has won all the editions that have been held so far. No victory for Anand. Remarkable effort. Anand, congratulations on winning the Mines Rapid for the record 10th time. Okay. What do you feel? Well, basically sort of relieved because, uh, I mean, already this was my 14th game with Aronian here. So, uh, I mean, we were just playing each other and each other and again and again and again. So it was, uh, finally it seems sort of fair that uh, I took one, he took one. So uh, he took 960, I took uh, the Rapid event. But... Um, Okay, basically I'm relieved. Uh, I can stop now because we uh, really played quite a lot. The championship in which world's top 10 grandmaster participated was held in Mexico City from 12th September to 30th September. Anand played one of his best game in this round against Peter Swidler, though Peter created a lot of complications for Anand in this game. The chess king came out of this Anand resisted his fourth game. win of the championship in the 11th round when he defeated the most unpredictable and dangerous player of the championship, Alexander Mojovic, and increased his lead to one and a half point. However, Anand got a scare in the penalty mate round game when he played like a tiger and turned the losing battle into a drawn game against Alexander Grishuk. In the final round game, Anand just needed a draw to become the new world chess champion. 
And really, I mean, this tournament has gone, uh, went like a dream. Um, yesterday I had to work really hard, but um, today I just remembered uh, Tal saying that uh, when your hand plays one way and your heart plays another, it never goes well. So I decided to be very solid and, and just go for the draw. Um, and uh, no, it's, it's great. I mean, it's the second time I win the title. Uh, dream. Um, yesterday at work, and this time there's no rival claimant, so we've had uh, a unified title since last year. And uh, no, of course, it's, it's just a fantastic uh, feeling. Anand, who has won many world titles like World Cup, World Junior and World Championship in the past, called this achievement as one of his best. Well, fantastic. Uh, and this year has been a magical year because uh, I've become world number one. Uh, probably I'm going to cross 28 round after this event. And to become world champion, uh, okay, it's somehow it's just been a great year. Uh, and also, since last year, we've had the chance to become um, the absolute world champion again because the two titles have reunified. Uh, so, you know, that also made it uh, an extra uh, incentive to win this time. The World Chess Championship match between Anand and Vladimir Kramnik was held in Bern from October 12 to 29, 2008 in the Arts and Exhibition Hall of Federal Republic of Germany. Anand was holding the title after the 2007 Mexico City tournament, while Kramnik had a right to challenge him as the winner of the 2006 Alistair match with Vessel in Topolov. Anand and Kramnik started out peacefully with two interesting draws. However, the Indian player exploded to score three wins in Game 3, Game 5 and Game 6. Especially difficult for Kramnik were the two losses with Black in the same line, which basically have decided the outcome of the match in early stage. Although Kramnik managed to pull a magnificent win in 10th game and spoiled the celebration planned for Diwali, Anand drew 11th game with white pieces to the delight of his fans in India and worldwide. This is an undisputed title, but is it the most important one of the three titles you have won? Well, since 2006, all the titles have been undisputed. So when I won in Mexico last year, I was already undisputed champion. Um, I think it's, you know, it's important to move past this divided division because we don't have it anymore in chess. Um, I can't really choose between them. I, I mean, Mexico was beautiful. I remember how happy I was there. Uh, I'm very happy here as well. Um, uh, Kramnik is a formidable match opponent and to uh, win and that too in a convincing manner uh, it's definitely an achievement I will cherish.
to a tremendous applause, World Chess Champion Vishwanathan Anand was presented with the Black Wanderer statue of Chess Oscar by the President of the International Chess Federation, Simpson Newton. Anand, this is a recognition from other grand masters and chess journalists. How does this compare with winning a title like at Linares or Kouras? Well, I think they are interconnected. Um, I think you win Oscars because uh, you win tournaments and have good results. Um, therefore, it's not really a question of either or. Um, I'm very happy to have the recognition, but uh, obviously it flows for my results, and I'm very happy that I had a good year and defended my title. Having revolutionized chess in India, Anand, who holds a degree in commerce, is deeply involved in promoting the game of chess in the country. We salute this master craftsman for his devotion and the laurels he has brought to the nation. It's not only in the classical chess that Anand has excelled. In younger days, people used to fear all his opponents were quite fearful of his speed. He was nicknamed the Lightning Kid, the Whisk Kid, who could play very, very fast. And not many years later, Anand showcased his skill at the top of world chess in this variant also, especially the rapid chess, wherein Anand won as many as 11 titles at the men's chess classics and also won a handful of events that were held worldwide, including the World British Championship once. Besides that, Anand has been playing advanced chess quite a lot. That was that started with the, the aid of the computers and subsequently the aid of the computers were removed and the match tradition continued at Lyon in Spain. More recently, Anand played a match there with Alexei Shirov. The city of Leon in Spain, some 400 kilometers northwest of the Spanish capital Madrid, is known for its cathedrals, monasteries, castles and palaces. With a small population of just over 200,000, Leon was added to the neighboring region of Castile to form the autonomous community of Castile and Leon. Spain's architectural and artistic heritage is one of the most important in the world. Lyon has been a mecca of rapid chess and the birthplace of advanced rapid chess with the help of computers. It is here that world chess champion Vishnathan Anand created a history of sorts winning the coveted titles as many as seven times. Over the years, the advanced chess has been stopped. They no longer play the advanced chess match with the aid of the computers, as was the case when the idea was conceived many years ago. It is still called the advanced chess match, but without the aid of the computers. And this year, Vishnathan Anand took on one of the most creative players in the history of chess, Alexis Shirov, the Latvian-born Spaniard. And here comes the king of chess, world champion Vishwanathan Anand. He will be playing the first game with black pieces. Six games in all, which means the person scoring three and a half points will win this match. The opening moves. Confirming the ceremonial start to the 2011 advanced chess match between Alexis Shirov of Spain and Vishnathan Anand of India. Settling down, Alexis Shirov. 
Alexis Shirov was the man against whom Anand played the finals of his first World Championship triumph at Tehran in Iran. Both Shirov and Anand had qualified to the finals of a knockout World Chess Championship held in New Delhi and the finals were held in Iran. That too incidentally was a six game match and Anand won it quite handsomely to begin what would be a series of world title triumphs. After Anand won that world championship match he went on to win the world championship match tournament and subsequently two other world championship matches thereafter making him the only player in the history of chess to win the world championship in as many as three different formats. Add to that he is the undisputed king of rapid and blitz chess. What's there that's left to be achieved. This one is a Karogan defense and Shirov typical of him has gone for the sharpest line the advanced variation minutes to both the players the game would last approximately two hours there is an increment after every move is made this was an idea which was advocated by former world champion and late Robert James Fisher Let's have a look at the moves of the match between Shiro and Anand. Very rare openings. As the computer is showing now, d5 is one of the options, but of course, Anand doesn't go for it. He plays c6. This is called the Karakon defense. While its most natural response is to occupy the center with his second pawn by playing d4, to which Anand replies d5. Karakon defense is very solid in nature. It has a reputation of being one of the most solid openings against 1e4. When white pushes the king pawn to the fifth square, she's always been employing this for quite some time with white. Bishop f5 is the most natural response. Knight f3. Anand plays e6. Bishop comes to e2, knight e7, there is no other way that the knight could have been developed and now Shiro castles on the king side. c5, trying to dismantle white's strong center, Shiro takes it and now Anand played knight e6, a multi-purpose move, attacking e5 with the knight Attacking c5 with the bishop on f8. Knight d7 is next in line, which would further increase pressure on the e pawn, and also queen c7 very much in line to further increase pressure again on the e pawn. Black has only temporarily sacrificed a pawn. Shiro develops bishop g5, threatening the queen. And on brings his bishop out to e7. Now the bishop on g5 is attacked. So Anand quite happy to remove white's active bishop on g5. Shiro obliges. The position is approximately equal with a lot of hidden dynamic factors. The pawn on e5 gives white chances to go for some kind of attack on the king's side in future. However, Shiro goes for c4, starting to attack the d5 pawn now. He knew there wouldn't be much point in trying to defend a pawn which is hanging on c5. And then captures the pawn. And 
now there is a tricky situation white has got a lot of control apparently especially on the d6 square any piece reaching there could be formidable so here Shiro goes for this traditional move knight a3 intending to take this pawn with the knight and then jumping out the knight over to the d6 square the c5 pawn is obviously doomed it's, it's going to fall in quick time and in place knight d7 attacking both e5 and c5 he intends to take them with the knight knight b5 threatening to enter a check to the king on c7 is threatened followed by rook is hanging obviously black has only one move at his disposal here to go short castle and it does that and now again black is threatening the same thing e5 and c5 both are under attack Shiro posts his knight on the 6th rank as Anand proves with his knight takes c5 maneuver the pawns are equal now white is also settled with pawn weaknesses on the queen side Shiro played bishop b5 trying to remove one of the attackers of the e5 pawn Shirov takes the knight, this is what he went for just to move back, he wanted to capture this knight which was constantly attacking his weaknesses on the e5 square now the pawn structure on the queen side is almost similar it's ditto in fact so white's weakness on the c3 square by this capture is also covered Shiro now pushes the pawn to h3, trying to drive the bishop away. Bishop h5, I'm quite happy to regroup the pieces. g4. Now, while this move might give white uh, some kind of spatial advantage, but uh, at the same time, it also seriously weakens the king side. The bishop on g6 is excellent. He can't harm that, so Shiro decides to trouble the knight on c5 on d6 is occupying very important squares as we can see here now knight on d6 occupies as many as 6 squares c5 attacking the queen I should have here went queen a4 the idea is to capture at some point of time on b7 and then invade the 7th rank with the rook d7 move this time Alan captures, not really afraid to allow a fast pawn on the 6th rank anymore. The rook to captures with the rook. It's time for black to make some headways on the king side. Alan does that very effectively. F5 to the 7th rank. This is a coveted square for the rook as and when possible. But somehow in this position, this isn't crucial at all. Queen retreats back. Rook comes to d1 to aid the other force, which is sitting pretty on d7 square. And then captures on g4. The knight on f3 is not only attacked by the pawn on g4, but also by the rook on f8. So queen g4 is obligatory. And now Anand decides to get rid of the dangerous rook on the 7th rank. Quite a natural choice here. Capture, recapture, and now we arrive at a situation where the pawn on e5 is again further attacked by black's queen. If we look at this position closely, we find that white's king is in fact more dangerously poised than black. Got two pawns right in front of it. The bishop on g6 is also working as an excellent defender. For supporting the pawn. Rook e8 Anand says Tito also supports the pawn on e6 which was now hanging by knight. Shiro decides to trade the queens and take the seventh rank with the other rook now. No problems as such in white's position but whether white can try and put some pressure on black remains a question. Rook e7 is played as Anand now decides to push 
quickly for a draw. He's quite happy to sacrifice his e6 pawn temporarily. And temporarily it is. Bishop takes on e6 and black recaptures the pawn. Now it's uh, 4 pawns versus 4 pawns. So there's not much that white can do or black can do about this position. Should be a draw in quick time. Shiro goes for the further exchanges as Anand also recaptures a pawn on h3. The c3 pawn is hanging so Shiro decides to push the pawn to the 6th rank. Try to give a check and then e7 is the threat. Only move is to bring the rook behind the passed pawn and Shiro defends it. And now the Spaniard is threatening to push the a pawn to glory. So there's not much choice that Anand has except attacking the rook on e7. A check comes back, rook e7 played again, king f8 played again. And while the puppet, the it's not exactly perpetual checks but it's uh, the repetition of moves. It's now inevitable, both players sign peace. Well, it was a Karo Khan. Um, I had, um, I mean, I occasionally play this opening and uh, though I haven't played it a lot recently, I thought it might come as a surprise exactly for that reason. But uh, he played a good uh, idea. Um, and I had to find some accurate moves at the board to equalize. I think this move bishop g5 I haven't really analyzed much before. But um, I think I dealt with the problems quite well. So though he gets a lot of space and he gets a knight very deep in my uh, territory, I actually generate enough counterplay.